Warning. Uncharted planet detected. Scanning. Scanning. Warning. Life form detected. Life form identified. Omicron and Joel of Stellar Gamma Publishing. Incoming transmission. Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Traveler RPG Headquarters. You can find our Facebook group by searching our name in the Facebook search tool, or find a link in the video description below. Thanks for participating in our third annual May Day May Day Traveler Day event. It's a day we celebrate Traveler and all its additions and offshoots for all the fun times it's given us around the gaming table with friends and family. I'm your host, Frank Zuccardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and today I'm happy to introduce Mr. Omer Golanjol of Stella Gamma Publishing. Welcome, Omer. Hi. How are you doing? Quite doing well recently. Too much of my day job getting in the way of gaming and of game writing, but uh, doing quite well. Fantastic. I'm staying uh, healthy and uh, COVID-free, I hope. <laughs> yeah, thanks God, I'm already uh, vaccinated, completely vaccinated, so there is no problem. Oh, fantastic. I'm excited to get my uh, first vaccination yeah. next Wednesday. My wife is a complete, she's a teacher, so she's got uh, completely vaccinated, and that uh, gave us some uh, relief. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, Omer, for those of, uh, this is your third year participating with us, and thank you very much. Yes. Um, for folks who um, haven't met you before, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, how old are you? Where do you live? Stuff like that. I'm, I'm 39 years old. I live in Israel for the last uh, 35 years. I was born in the United States, but I, I came here at the age of four. Uh, and uh, I'm living in for quite a long time, therefore my accent. <laughs> I know to write English extremely well, but I have no one to speak English to, so I have an Israeli actor. Ah, so, uh, well, once a year we get to practice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully more than that. Um, so, uh, so you were born in America and you um, moved to Israel when you were four. You've been living there ever since. Yes. And um, so uh, when you were uh, growing up, uh, do you have a like a favorite sci-fi book or TV show or movie that inspired you as a child? Yes, Babylon 5 is uh, one of the best, I think. One of the best uh, science fiction TV shows. I got into it much more than to Star Trek or mm -hmm. Star Wars. And they read a lot of older sci-fi books because uh, back then you couldn't, in the 90s or 80s, you couldn't uh, just mail order books from abroad, so you had to wait for translations, and they usually they translated all this stuff. So I read a lot of Larry Niven, and uh, a lot of Arthur C. Clarke, all the classical uh, science fiction. I think it got me easier into Traveler. Who's your favorite character on Babylon 5? I think it's a very interesting question, but it's Londo Molari, the best, you know, best, most interesting personality, and a uh, lot of comic relief moment in addition to his a very tragic story mm. yeah um i liked uh, him as well and uh also well i just like sheridan too <laughs> yes <laughs> do you have any uh hobbies aside from gaming yes uh, cooking especially uh -huh. and uh, video gaming it's part of gaming but uh, recently i didn't play much but in the past i was playing a lot of it mm -hmm. And but it's mainly cooking because uh, I'm trying to improve my diet, so I have to cook uh -huh. my own food and invest in cooking. Otherwise, I don't. Uh, I will not get. You know, not lose weight without cooking myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your uh, What's your favorite? Do you have a f specific type of food you like to cook, or what's your favorite dish? Uh, a huge amount of things. I try everything. My favorite food is uh, something called cholen. It's a kind of stew, very, very slow cooking stew. Uh, about 20 years, you put it on an electric plate for 20 hours. And it was meat and everything. It's uh, one of the less healthier things. Mm. But it's very, very tasty. Sounds good. <laughs> yes. 
All right. So as you were uh, put to put things in uh, traveler terms, as you were growing up, yes. um, would you what would you say your you know we get three background skills normally. Uh, now they don't have to be exactly traveler background skills, but um, what would you say your your childhood background skills were? You could say computer and art if you consider writing a lot of stuff. Yes. And uh, I think it's sort of a skill. It's more into the education characteristic. And um, did you ever uh, go to university or join the military? It is interesting because uh, we have a military draft in Israel, but I wasn't uh, enlisted because of uh, medical exemptions. So I went directly to the university. I have a master's degree in geography and urban planning. Uh, I don't work in this field. I work in translation, but of course my education is very useful because I have the vocabulary and the all the experience with English. Mm. Because when you study all the study material, all the scientific material is of course in English. Almost nothing gets published here in Hebrew, it's a very small country. All right, so um, let's say, you know, a lot of times in um, Traveler, when you uh, get rejected from the military, you get drafted anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, if you had been drafted, uh, what service uh, branch do you think you would have been put in? Or would you prefer to be put in? Probably some kind of military intelligence or something technological. I'm not a, not, not a combat person in real life. I, of course, love playing combat in role-playing games, but in real life, I'm not someone into very tough fitness and adrenaline soldiers and everything. All right, fair enough. And uh, if you were to uh, put yourself in terms of a traveler character, what would you say your personal stats are? I think my career is other. Most likely, if you take the core book, uh, or scholar, if you take uh, Citizens of the Imperium, mm-hmm. uh, my strengths and endurance are about four, both or five. Uh, my dexterity is eight. Uh, intelligence, maybe nine. Education is uh, C, that is 12 at least. And social standing is about seven or eight. All right. Cool. I wonder. Uh, I'm asking everybody that question, and so and I think yes. people have been thinking about it <laughs> because they they're pretty fast on the reply. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I did start myself. So I oh, good. Okay. Some time ago. That was a, a game I was uh, kind of playing around at uh, the Traveler RPG headquarters on Facebook. Stat yeah. yourself. It seemed pretty popular. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So. Let's talk about uh, what got you into RPG gaming. Um, so what what's your first memory? Or have you, um, some people um, played board games and things with their family or card games before they got into role-playing games. What was your gaming career like as, not career, but like life? What was your gaming life as a kid before you got into RPGs? Started with video games, but uh, around the age of 13 or 14, I think, I got into AD&D 2nd edition, which was the only RPG around. And some people had the old uh, VX system, the older, older D&D, but most people simply had the 2nd edition. And a few years later, I encountered Shadowrun and the Traveler, and a few other uh, more uh, science fiction or futuristic RPGs. But first, we simply played the hell out of three core books. Dungeons and Dragons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, second edition. Hmm. And so, uh, wh- uh, what was your favorite? Did you have a favorite character class in D and D? In D and D, it's quite a complex question because I, all the time I play different things. It usually I love to play dwarves, uh, so it's usually some kind of fighter or cleric, but it depends on the edition. But in older editions, you could, uh, uh, it was, you know, classes, uh, classes and race were the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it was easier to pick, but I usually don't get into wizards and mages. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. And then, uh, how, so how did you um, come across uh, Traveler? What were your first Traveler games like? I came across it quite uh, accidentally. I bought a few books from some vendors. The vendor didn't have them in the shop. He simply, out of his car, he was selling things. That is, you, you, 
either at conventions or you call him and, and on the way to various places he would stop at your town and you buy from his town. So I bought several Shadowrun books and he gave me Traveler at a discount. I started reading it. It was a bit, you know, it was uh, books zero to eight in one volume reprint of mm. Classic Traveler. Uh, of course, it's, it, the book itself is very, very uh, simple in its layout, almost without any art, but uh, it was very intriguing to read it, to get into science fiction, which was close to all the stuff I read. Uh, so I started playing with it, I started writing things for it, for my group, and it was very, very fun. Um, what, what drew you to role-playing games in general? What, um... When you discovered role-playing games as opposed to board games, uh, what got you hooked? Usually world building. That is, I'm usually the game master mm -hmm. in most cases. And uh, the ability to build a world and to get people into it and, and let them experience this world is very, very uh, exciting for me. So you've been uh, mainly the GM or ma mainly the player? Mainly the GM, as I say, mm -hmm. almost and, always, for reals. Uh, are you uh, and are you happy with that, or do you want to be the player more often? No, no, I prefer it. It's more interesting uh, for me. Uh, because, I, again, I could build the world. I could uh, let people experience my world, my thoughts. Mm. It gives me a lot of potential. Mm. Most Many of my uh, RPG books I wrote, uh, our worlds or settings, which were very enjoyable to write. Mm. And so, when you started uh, playing Traveler, did you find a certain um, Traveler career that you were drawn to uh, more than others? Kind of like how you know, people have a favorite D and D class. Do you have a favorite Traveler class career? I think that's. I think the scouts are very uh, interesting to play, but uh, again, uh, your chances of surviving character generation. Classic traveler with the scout are very, very slim. Mm. But it's an interesting career, you know, you are going out, explore the universe, and only go and only die when no one died before. Uh, <laughs> and you could get a starship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to go and die when no one has died before, that's hilarious. Yes, this is exa <laughs> exactly what, what happens in classic traveler character generation with scouts. <laughs> Uh, um, do you have a, an all-time favorite uh, traveler story, like a, a you know a favorite thing that happened, uh, like a no crap there I was. I can't think of anything particular. Usually, my more interesting stories are all the stuff I wrote for it, and uh, suddenly things that people are interested in stuff I write. It's more than more than the games it's the, themselves. I ran. Games are, uh, you know, it's not much something specific. The experience of letting people, you know, being their eyes to the universe. Hmm, that's an interesting way of thinking about it. Um, all right, so uh, what, what would your gaming advice be to a brand new Traveler player? Let's say you go to a, uh, uh, a gaming store and you see some people uh, sitting around the gaming table and they have some Traveler books and they're trying to figure it out. And there's a... Uh, there's some players and there's a referee. What's your uh, uh, advice to a brand new traveler player? To the player and the referee is to take things easy. A traveler by itself, by its spirit, is a rules light game where you simply have to go with the with adventure, let things roll. Uh, it's not a tactical RPG like uh, the later editions of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a game, it's a simple game. You have a simple character fitting into an index card, and you simply go and do cool stuff. And from time to time, you refer to your index card, but you don't have, you don't have to get into too much mechanics. And simply, you don't have to feel that you're constrained by your mechanical uh, characteristics and skills. Okay. And, would, and uh, now you see the... Referee, um, do you have any specific advice for him, or just the same advice? Very similar. Again, it's uh, don't don't try to make it uh, too too much of a mechanical game. Simply let things roll. Most of the thing you do on the fly, because you can't uh, 
prepare the entire universe ahead of time. So you have to know how to improvise. Good advice. Um, now let's say uh, you uh, the characters now have their uh, or the players that have the central supply catalog out and they're trying to outfit their their characters. What are um, what what three items would you recommend all uh, traveler characters have in their backpack? Uh, of course, you need a weapon, but it's not the main thing you need. You need some kind of a computer or computer tools, depending on the edition, the setting. It could be, you know, it's very advanced hand computer with a calculator, by the way. But it's also useful for it because, again, in science fiction, you have to have something to record data with. Uh, you need a towel because it's traditional for science fiction to carry a towel with you. And uh, some kind of uh, utility items with you. A lot of the things you're interacting with your environment. So uh, a screwdriver might be more useful than to use a gun in many cases, or a multi-tool. Okay, so a computer, a towel, and a multi-tool. All right. Yes. Good advice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, if if there was a um, like a starter kit, what, uh, like if uh, stranded on a desert island, uh, what? traveler books uh would you want to have with you just uh what are the the, the bare minimum uh, that you would recommend people get simply the, if you're playing classic traveler simply the three basic books or uh, the newer traveler book new or the relative already from 30 years ago uh, 40 years ago but uh, with these three books you could do everything all Everything right. else is optional. So that gets me um, into um, Cepheus Engine. Um, yes. How did you uh, get involved in C with uh, Cepheus Engine? Uh, in uh, 2016, I was trying to get into publishing again, to publish my own stuff, so having my stuff published by other people. And uh, there was supposed to be the second edition of uh, Mongoose Traveler. And we were promised that it will have the same license as the first edition. And we started writing things for it before it was published because we were in the playtest and because we wanted to have something compatible. And then uh, for reasons I will not go here because it's too much into you know, hand politics, you can say. Uh, it was, we were unable to publish for Mongoose Traveler, second edition, so we looked for another way to publish our uh, material, uh, which was very soon found to be the Cepheus Engine SRD, that's the reference document. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your first um, uh, Cepheus Engine title? Uh, something called from the ashes, which provide you with options to avoid death or to cheat death by uh, becoming a cyborg and things like that. Uh, it was quite simple, and my, the layout back then wasn't very good because my layout skills were extremely simple. But uh, it got me into into the the practice of putting out the uh, Cepheus engine stuff, and eventually we got into our very big product, which is uh, the Star Wars House, which are set main setting. And after while, afterwards, uh, we published the few slides. So tell us a little bit about uh, the Stars Are Ours. What's that? Uh, set? Is that a setting or a whole system? Or a... it's it's a, it's a space opera setting setting uh, with a few supporting products right now. Uh, I tried to fuse UFO lore with uh, you know, all the conspiracy theories about little gray aliens. Uh, with the spirit of adventure, I encountered in science fiction of uh, sweeping action among the stars and things like that. It, uh, it was extremely fun to write. And I recommend it if you want the uh, space opera uh, with, all, with an interesting universe, which is not too large, but it's large enough to contain whole wars and uh, uh, events and espionage and everything, it was it is very recommended. Hmm. And um, 
And then uh, what did you produce after that? Tell us uh, more about um, the Cepheus Lite. Cepheus Lite is our own version of the Cepheus engine because I saw that the, the Cepheus engine is an excellent, excellent system, but we wanted something more uh, concise for people to play, or something simpler, uh, easier to get into on the table. So we uh, cut down the system into something simpler. It's built, it's built, built for a faster play and uh, for simpler play. Uh, it's very, very small, very simple book. Again, it includes almost everything in Cepheus Engine, but it's a simpler uh, method with, with less fiddly bits. All right. Um, and uh, um, let's see. Do you work by yourself, or uh, do you have a crew of people? You're not a lone wolf publisher, right? You have a, you have a team of people that you work with. No, we are six. We are six people. We probably since the team we brainstorm um, our books ahead of time and then edit each other's work. Uh -huh. I I do own the company, but most of the work is quite egalitarian. It is. Uh, it's not like I I decide about the products that people write for me. I can have happens in certain companies, but we decide together and get things done. All right, cool. Um, and uh, uh, what was your what's your favorite type of content to produce? Where, what um, do you like to do? World building or or doing rules or uh, what's your especially uh, world building and the uh, core rule books? Uh, they are most enjoyable, and core core rule, book, core, uh, rule books sell the best. I think among things, because people love to have their rules, especially if they are simple. Mm. Uh, settings also sell quite well, adventure, adventures a little less, uh, unfortunately. Okay. Um, and then, so what have you been up to the past year since we spoke last? Um, are you, uh, how has COVID affected your gaming life? I play online right now, mm -hmm. only online, because uh, no one wants to meet, even though lockdown is lifted and everyone is vaccinated. Uh, and we usually play one-off games in various simple uh, systems. It was Nave and uh, a few other uh, Mockborg, several OSR titles. A bit of Traveler, but too much of what we did was one-off in all kinds of uh, modern systems, lightweight systems, and inspired me to write my own lightweight rules. All right, so have you been... Uh taking advantage of this downtime to produce anything um, over the past year? Got any new products out? My day job doesn't uh, change, didn't change due to COVID. So uh, it's not like I had more free time. Uh -huh. I had the same amount of free time because I'm working from home anyway. So it doesn't really change. Uh, but I did publish several books this year. Uh, one was, I don't know if it was before we spoke or after we spoke last time, a Sword of Cepheus, which is a sword and sorcery version of Cepheus Light, a full-scale game. Uh, afterwards, we, we published Cepheus Atom, uh, which is much lighter uh, post-apocalyptic game. And finally, Barbaric, uh, which is lightweight, very lightweight, Sorcery game, so we published a lot of rules. And uh, tell me some more about Barbaric. It looks like it's uh, doing well. It's uh, kind of a Conan style um, sword and sorcery, or how does it go? Conan and Elric and all kinds of uh, more action oriented games, not tactical action, but generally, you know, to play like the like to experience the adventures of Conan and Elric. Uh, it's very lightweight, it's quite simple. Uh, it allows you a lot of action and a lot of, op a lot of options, a very, very thin book. Especially magic is dangerous, because you don't, it's not like Dungeons and Dragons when you, you have spell slots and all the, the magic works all the time according to the same uh, method. Uh, it's skill-based and you could fail, and you could sometimes fail critically and bad things will happen. So. Uh, it's like magic is in con in Conan. It is. It, it isn't uh, something uh, especially nice to deal with. It's something dark that people 
Messer out with because it grants the power. Sounds awesome. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, sci-fi titles coming up this year? What are your plans for uh, next year? Yes, we are working on the second edition of Cepheus Light and the second edition of This Stars of Ours, which might be uh, crowdfunded later or published without crowdfunding. We are still uh, considering our options. Uh, we are streamlining the rules and incorporating a lot of input we had for Cepheus Light. Uh, and trying to produce something which is which will be even better and even uh, lighter, and I think it will be a little different from uh, Cephas uh, Gen SRD or Core, a bit more different than the, than the first edition of Cephas Light because we are thinking everything. Awesome. And uh, when when do you think those will be uh, ready to, for purchasing? Uh, I think it will be around the summer or fall, uh, twenty twenty one. Where can do you have a website or where can people find your products? Uh, we have a, a Facebook page of Stellar Publishing. Uh, I think you could simply link it in the uh, comment in the description of this video. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have our uh, drive store PG store, uh, which is very large. You could also link to it and. Uh, well, especially it's very good to like the Facebook page and you get all the updates about our books. All right. So um, let's say uh, the uh, pandemic's over tomorrow. Uh, what's your first uh, gaming plans? <laughs> will, will you go back to in-person gaming or, you get, or do you like the uh, benefits that uh, remote gaming bring? It's still fun to play face-to-face. I think that uh, remote gaming is easier to set up because we could play with people all around the country and all around the world, uh, at least in nearby time zones. Uh, but uh, I think that playing face to face, uh, the last game we wanted to play before the pandemic uh, was actually Savage Worlds in a traveler uh, in the World War One game. Semi horror, semi action uh, setting in the First World War for uh, for Savage Worlds. I hope I'm hoping to restart the game once we we could meet. But uh, Traveler, Cephas uh, Engine, and all kinds of light systems, we uh, will continue playing online. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for our interview. We've reached the end of my questions. Yes. <laughs> Um, Excellent. Well, hey, thanks a lot for uh, joining us for this third year. Um, it's nice to hear from you again, and uh, Great. Uh, let's chat more on uh, on Discord. All right. All right. Well, I'm your host, Frank Sicardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and I've been talking with Mr. Omer Golan Joel of Stella Gamma Publishing. Tell us once more where we can uh, purchase your titles. You could you could purchase our titles on Drive Through RPG. Simply search for Stellar Publishing. You could also find our uh, Facebook page again, Stellar Publishing uh, for updates about our product. Great, fantastic, Omer. Thank you so much for participating in our Mayday You're Mayday welcome. event. And thank you, dear listener, for joining us today. And that's all for now, travelers. Until next time, happy traveling. <laughs>